acrobats, animals, clowns, and magicians take on the role of a circus director touring the United States at the end of the 19th century in Three Ring Circus. <laughs> joining us at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Delp. And I'm Kevin Delp. Three Ring Circus is a game for one to four players that takes about 60 minutes to play. It's published by DeVere, and they sent us this copy to review. We'll give a quick overview of the game and then share our thoughts. Please take a moment to like this video, it really does help out our channel. The game comes with a main game board, player boards, tokens, and cards for money, scoring goals, and tickets. The game puts players in charge of their own circus troupe. You'll be traveling around the United States, performing small, medium, and big shows. On your turn, you do one of two things. Engage an artist, which is placing a circus performer on your player board, or perform a show. When you place a card on your board, you have to pay the cost indicated on the top left. If you already have cards in that row, then the cost of the new card is reduced by the highest card. Cards must be arranged in ascending order, with lower cards to the left and higher cards to the right. If necessary, you'll shift cards to keep the order correct. Sometimes you gain a benefit when you cover a space. Other times you actually lose benefits, like covering the train movement icon. Well, that leads right into the other action you can take, performing a show. If you decide to perform, the first thing you do is move your caravan a number of spaces up to the number of those train icons that are visible on your board. Then, depending on the space you choose, you perform a small, medium, or big show. Now the game uses the word main for big shows, but it's just easier for me to use the word big. No matter the type of performance you choose, you get to draw a number of money cards equal to the amount of money icons visible on your board. The other benefits you receive are based on the type of performance. You perform small shows in towns like this and put your tent on the space. These are the easiest to perform and only generate money cards. You draw one money card for the town you're in, and then an additional money card for each connected small town that doesn't have a circus tent. Each town can hold one tent. Medium shows are performed in medium-sized cities. The strength of your performance is based on the number of pedestals visible on your player board. You get a bonus for having the preferred performer type on your board. Place your circus tent on the number indicating your pedestal strength and either gain points or tickets. This is the main way of getting new tickets into your hand. The tickets represent valuable star performers. To perform in a big city, you need to have a specific performer, represented by a certain color and number. If you have that number, you'll gain points and can earn extra points by having performers of certain colors to the left and right of the main performer. You'll get even more points if you are the first or second to perform in a big city. A couple of other notes when performing. You can play a $5 money card from your hand to gain an immediate benefit, like moving your caravan, extra spaces, getting points, more cards, and things like that. And every time someone performs, you move the Barnum caravan one space on the outer loop. When Barnum reaches the first big city, he'll stop there until the end of the round, and then players receive points based on the majority of circus tents in that region. Barnum will then continue on his way. Barnum's movement is the game time tracker, because when he makes it back to his starting city, that triggers the end of the game. Players will get end game points for their acts on their player boards that have the little popcorn bucket in the right hand corner. Additional points for some of the cards based on card colors or what is to the left or right of them, and points for any end game goal cards they were able to play on their player boards. And like most games, the player with the most points wins. So this game has both a majority scoring aspect and a tableau card building aspect. I tend to lean a little bit more into the tableau building and I must say done pretty well. You have. I really like games that have area control or majority scoring like this one does. I've tried to make sure I get points in each region, but I think I might have focused on that a little too much on the games that I've played. <laughs> yeah, don't ignore your tableau. You can get a lot of points from getting the right cards in the right spots on your player board. I really like the tension in the game. Not only what cards should I get, but also what row should I place them in on my player board. 
If you can reach the end of the rows, you get points there too. And finishing columns lets you play your end game goal cards. I like to have a variety of cards on my board, some that give endgame points, some that provide pedestals for those medium shows, some that give movement mm. or money icons. And of course, I'm also considering my endgame goal cards. Some of them score based on the cards on your board. Now there's definitely planning involved in the game, making sure you are performing in the right regions. There was one game where Barnum had already scored a region, and I just couldn't get there in time, but I had built up my row of cards to score points in the big city. I got lots of points, but it would have been better for me to get my circus token there before the region scoring instead of after. Yes, timing. <laughs> <laughs> As shows are performed, you place your circus tents, which will block spaces and reduce future options. But there is a potential benefit as the board fills up because the tents on small towns basically eliminate those spaces. Mm -hmm. You don't count them towards your movement number. If the tents are on the outside path, Barnum is going to move faster as well. And that could hasten the end of the game before you're ready. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are some variants on where you start the Barnum caravan and even if he moves clockwise or counterclockwise for the game, which I find really interesting. There's some player interaction with blocking spots, competing for majorities, and taking cards, but it's fairly indirect. There isn't any take that in the game, mm -hmm. which I'm very glad for. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like take that. So I personally enjoyed this game at four players. The majority scoring was more interesting with more people. The lower player counts, they, they were fine. Yeah. You actually place closed region tiles on the main board to make the map smaller, which is good. But for me, I do think the more the merrier. I totally agree about the player count. It's just a better game with the way the region scoring works at the higher player counts, and the main board just looks really cool with all the different colored circus tents spread out across the board. We didn't try the solo game. No, sorry <laughs> about that. So here are a few critiques. The scoring for the big cities is interesting. It allows you um, to get a different amount of points mm -hmm. based on how many of the requirements you meet, but it can be frustrating if you don't draw the correct tickets. You have to have that main <laughs> performer. Now, you can try to set yourself up to perform in a medium city when there's a card you need on the display, mm -hmm. but sometimes another player gets it first and then you have to pick blindly. If someone can get the required performers for multiple big cities, they can score a lot of points. Yep. So I'm not saying this is a major issue, but there is some luck involved, so you might want to keep that in mind. Now, my critique is about one of the colors in the game. I think orange instead of yellow might have been better color for the player colors. The yellow sometimes gets washed out on the board and orange would stand out better and also match the other players' red purple, and blue. But other than that one color choice, I really like the overall aesthetic of Three Ring Circus. It has that 1800s feel in the artwork, and I love the wooden components, the caravans, and the painted tents, and the tokens. Devere did a superb job with the production. Overall, I really enjoyed our plays of Three Ring Circus, and that's saying a lot since I <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> don't normally enjoy games that have that area of majority scoring. What I do appreciate is the variety of ways to score points. It's not just have the most tents in the region. need to remember that. <laughs> so I enjoy the puzzly aspect of which cards to play on my board and where, how can I best arrange my performers to score lots of points, which I usually do well out. And I also like the game length. It doesn't overstay its welcome. I agree. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I think one of the things that draws me to this game is the simplicity of gameplay. But it's pretty strategic, too. Your decision of, am I playing a card to my board or am I performing, seems simple enough, but there's some really good tension built into that simplicity. It reminds me a little bit of Ticket to Ride with the map aspect, but the game is a step up in complexity. It's more similar to weight of a game like Cascadia because you have the simplicity of gameplay, but pretty strategic. like in Cascadia, what tiles are you going for, and where you're placing them for points. Hmm. Interesting thoughts there. <laughs> so, uh, we definitely recommend Three Ring Circus from Devere if you like this theme and style of play. Have you played any other board games with a circus theme? Which ones do you enjoy? Let us know down in the comments. 
So uh, the Magnificent mm. on the heavier side. Yep. Maybe uh, what Ten Penny Parks, or would that lean more towards? Uh, it's all park? in that same feel, so I'm okay with keeping it in that. So let us know down in the comments. <laughs> We're all dressed up and ready to record our review video of Three Ring Circus from DeVere. And Kevin's going to do a magic trick. Let us know what your favorite circus act is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.